Just to recap, this is where we were last time. Where we basically exit the screen and uh, we basically stay on the same level like over and over and over. So anyway, we're going to uh, fix this and add a few extra stages. Okay, um, in order to uh, set my program up to uh, to do different screens or different levels, different stages, what have you, I had to restructure the part of the code that occurs before the interrupt. So let's just go through this. So I begin the program by basically setting level to zero. In this case, zero uh, is, is the first level. Then there's a new subroutine called um, init level. And it does stuff like uh, paints the screen and stuff like that. And uh, we'll eventually get uh, enemy positions, enemy types and all that stuff. Then we have uh, a region of the code called level state. So basically, we look for the level change flag. We compare it with one. One represents um, a change of level. So in the interrupt that happens uh, 60 times a second, an event could happen that causes the level change flag to be set. But anyway, so if it's not set, then we go back to level state. So basically, again, um, while we're on a level, it'll just shuffle through um, uh, these lines of code here, essentially. Now, however, um, sometimes something will happen to change the level. Uh, more to the point, um, once the character reaches the far right-hand side of the screen, the level change flag will be set. So in this part of the code, um, we'll end up over here. So the first thing we do is we reset the change level flag. Uh, we increment the level right over here, uh, store it, and then we jump back to initialize level. And then again, we run the, the uh, init level thing, but our second time through, instead of level zero, we'll be doing level one, and then later on level two, etc. Okay, so this is towards my, the end of my program where I have a lot of the data stored. I just want to show you um, this little section here. This is where I have the different patterns for four different screens. The first one being screen zero, screen one, screen two, screen three. Um, so anyway, uh, I have a fairly efficient way to program these bricks. Each um, brick is represented by uh, a bit within a byte. So each byte um, basically represents eight different bricks. So that allows me to do an entire screen in uh, 24 bytes. So long story short, the, these are the four screens I have programmed so far. Um, maybe not too exciting looking at the hexadecimal, but we'll look at this on the actual game. Okay, so the moment of truth. We're about to leave the screen and you'll see that it changed to the second screen that was programmed. Now the third, which is a fancy one. Now it's too lazy to do the fourth, so it's going to be a repeat, I think, of either the first or second one. Yeah. And this is weird, um, but this is because I only have four different screens um, programmed. So the fifth one is just like a random jumble of uh, bricks, basically. Eventually I'll add more screens, like as the game evolves. But yeah, this is kind of cool and funny in its own way.